Shalom. 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 I come as a messenger from John, the beloved apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. I come to share greetings from John of hope, grace, and love. I also come to share a wonderful, marvelous work that John has given us. A, a story, a gospel, good news of the works, the life and teachings of our Lord Jesus. But John did not title this work. I call it Ha Lagos, the word. This is Ha Lagos. In Archaean, Ha Lagos. In the beginning was the word. Kai Ha Lagos Aim Prostan Theon. The word was with God. Kai Theos Aim Ha Lagos. And the word was God. The word, ha lagos, was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him. Apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. Life was in him. That life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man named John called the baptizer who was sent from God as a witness to testify about the light. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. For the true light, the light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. The world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own. His own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave the right to be children of God. To those who believe in his name. Who are born not of blood or the will of flesh or the will of man. Born of God. For the word, ha lagos, became flesh. Took up residence among us. We observed his glory. The glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him and exclaimed, There is one coming after me who has surpassed me because he existed before me. Indeed, we have all received grace after grace from his fullness. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, the one who is at the Father's side, he has revealed him. And this is John's testimony when Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, who are you? I, John didn't refuse to answer them, but declared, I am not the Messiah. Well, who are you? Are you Elijah? I am not. Are, are you the prophet? No. Well, who are you then? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What can you tell us about yourself? I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. It, it was just as Isaiah the prophet had said. Now they were sent from the Pharisees, so they asked, why then do you baptize if you're not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? I baptize with water, but one stands among you. You do not know him. He is the one coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. All these things happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, the place where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I told you about when I said, there is one coming after me who has surpassed me because he existed before me. I didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. And John has further testified. I watched the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. The Spirit rested on him. 
I did not know Him, but the One who sent me to baptize with water, He told me, the One you see the Spirit descending and resting on, He is the One who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified He is the Son of God. And again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. He saw Jesus passing by and John turned to his disciples and said, Look, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard what John said and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and noticed the disciples were following, he asked, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi means teacher. And they ask, where are you staying? Come and you'll see, Jesus answered. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying. And they stayed with him that day. It was about 10 in the morning. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two disciples who heard John and followed Jesus. And Andrew first went and found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. Messiah means anointed one. And Andrew brought his brother Simon to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, You are Simon, son of John. But you will be called Cephas or Peter, which means rock. The next day, he decided to travel to Galilee. And Jesus found Philip and said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida of Galilee, the hometown of Peter and Andrew. And Philip went and found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, the one the prophets have written about. And he's Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nazareth, replied Nathanael. Can, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said, come and you'll see. And when Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, well now here is a true son of Israel. No deceit in him. How, how, how do you know me? Asked Nathanael. Before Philip called you, while you were under the fig tree, I saw you, Jesus answered. Rabbi, replied Nathaniel, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, Nathaniel, do you believe only because I told you I saw you under a fig tree? You'll see greater things than this. You will see heaven opened and angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. Soon after this, it was the third day of the week. A wedding took place in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was at the wedding. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding as well. And then the wine ran out. And Jesus' mother came to him and said, Son, they have no more wine. And Jesus said, Emma. What does this concern of yours have to do with me? My time has not yet come. Jesus' mother went and told the servants, do whatever my son tells you. Now there were six stone water jars. They were set there to be used for Jewish purification. Each contained 20, 30 gallons. And Jesus told the servants, fill these jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. And then Jesus told the servants, draw some water out, take it to the chief servant. And they did. And when the chief servant tasted the water, after it had become wine, he didn't know where this wine came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Well, the chief servant went to the groom, and he said to him, I know. Oh, I know. Everyone always serves their best wine first, and then after one has drank freely, They'll serve the inferior. But you, <laughs> you have kept the very best wine until now. Jesus performed this, his first sign in Cana of Galilee. And his disciples believed in him. 
After this, Jesus went down to Capernaum together with his mother, his disciples, and his brothers. But he only stayed a few days. The Jewish Passover was near. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, in the temple complex, Jesus found people there who were selling oxen and sheep and doves. He also found money changers sitting there at their tables. And Jesus fashioned a whip out of cords. And he used the whip to drive everyone out of the temple complex together with their sheep, their oxen. And he poured out the money changers' coins. He overturned their tables. And he said to the people selling doves, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. And the disciples remembered it was written in Scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. And leaders of the Jews came to Jesus and said to him, what sign of authority are you going to show us for these things you're doing? And Jesus responded, destroy this sanctuary, I'll raise it up in three days. Therefore the Jews said, this sanctuary took 46 years to build, and you would raise it up in three days? Jesus, however, was speaking about the sanctuary of his body. So later, when he was raised from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had said this and believed in the scriptures and the statement that Jesus had made. And while Jesus was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, there were many there who trusted in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. Jesus, however, did not entrust himself to any of them, for he knew them all. Jesus did not need anyone to testify to him about any man. He knew what was within all men. There was a man named Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus in the darkness of night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you have been sent from God as a teacher, for no one could do the things you do unless God were with him. And so Jesus said to him, I assure you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can anyone be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb and be born again? I assure you, unless someone is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. For whatever is born of flesh is flesh. That this born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I've told you, you must be born again. The wind. It blows wherever it pleases. You can hear the sound that it makes. You don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? Are, are you the teacher of Israel and, and you don't know these things? I assure you, we speak what we know and testify to what we've seen. And you don't accept our testimony. If I've told you about things of earth and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about things of heaven? For no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him has eternal life here. God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone, everyone, Nicodemus, who believes in him will not perish but has eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Everyone who believes in him is not condemned, 
But everyone who has not believed is condemned already, for he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This, then, is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and avoids it, so their deeds might not be exposed. But everyone who lives by truth comes to the light, so their works might be shown to be accomplished by God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went to the Judean countryside. He spent time with them there and baptized. John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim at this time because there was plenty of water there. People were coming and being baptized since John had not yet been thrown into a prison. And then a dispute arose between John's disciples and a Jew about purification. The disciples came to John and they said, Rabbi, the one you testified about, the one you were with across the Jordan, he is now baptizing, and everyone is flocking to him. No one can receive a single thing that is not given to him from heaven. You yourself can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. The one who has the bride, he is the groom. The groom's friend who stands by and listens for him, rejoices greatly at the sound of the groom's voice. <laughs> so this joy of mine is complete. He must increase. I must decrease. The one who is from above is above all. The one who is from the earth is earthly. He speaks in earthly terms. The one who is from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. The one who has accepted his testimony has affirmed that God is true. For God sent him, he speaks God's words, God gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son. He has given all things into his hands so that everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. But everyone who refuses to believe in the Son will not see life. Instead, the wrath of God remains on them. When Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that he was making and baptizing more disciples than John, though Jesus himself wasn't baptizing, but the disciples were. Jesus left Judea to go again to Galilee. He chose to pass through Samaria. He came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, which was near the property Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, worn out by the journey, sat down by the well. It was about six in the evening. A woman of Samaria came to the well to draw water. The disciples had gone into town to buy food. So Jesus asked the woman, Could you give me a drink? How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would ask him, he would give you living water. Sir, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. And whoever drinks of this water will get thirsty again. But the water I will give him, will never be they'll never be thirsty again. For the water I will give them will become a well of water, springing up within them for eternal life. Sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to come here and draw water. 
Well, go and call your husband and come back here. I have no husband. You have correctly said, I don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. Sir... What you say is true. Sir, I see that you're a prophet. So why have our fathers worshipped on this mountain, yet you Jews say the place to worship is Jerusalem? I assure you a time is coming when you'll worship neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. For you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is of the Jews. But an hour is coming. The hour is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father wants such people to worship Him, for God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. I know that Messiah is coming. When He comes, He'll tell us everything. I am He, the one speaking to you. And just then, the disciples arrived. They were amazed to find Jesus talking to this woman, but no one said to him, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Well, the woman, she left her water jar. She ran into the town and she told everyone. Come, come see this man. He knew everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Come, come see this man. He told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Come, come see this man. He might be the Messiah. And when the Samaritans heard this, they made their way back to Jesus. And this, in the meantime, the disciples began to urge Jesus, Rabbi, have something to eat. Jesus said, I have food to eat that you do not know about. And the disciples began to ask one another, could someone else have brought him something to eat? And Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. And don't you say, there's still four more months and then the harvest? I want you to listen to what I say. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They're ready for harvest. For the reaper is already receiving pay and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the one who sows and the one who reaps can rejoice together. In this case, the saying's true. One sows, another reaps. For I'm sending you to reap where you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have benefited from their labor. For there were many Samaritans from that town who believed in Jesus because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me everything I ever did. And so when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay. He agreed to stay for two more days. And many more believed because of what Jesus said. And so they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said. We've heard for ourselves. We know this truly is the Savior of the world. After two days, he left for Galilee, and Jesus himself testified, a prophet has no honor in his home country. When they entered Galilee, the Galileans welcomed them because they had seen the signs Jesus had done in Jerusalem at the festival. They had also gone to the festival. But Jesus went again to Cana of Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And at that time, there was a certain important official in Capernaum whose son was ill. And when this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he came to him and pleaded with him to come down and heal his son. His son was about to die. Jesus told the man, unless you people see signs and wonders, will you never believe? And the man pleaded, down before my boy dies. Go, Jesus told the man. Your son will live. The man believed what Jesus told him and departed. And while he was still on the way down, his servants came to him saying, your boy is alive. He asked, when did he get better? Yesterday at seven in the morning, the fever left him, they answered. And this father realized it was that very hour when Jesus had told him, your son will live. And this man 
together with this whole household, believed in Jesus. Jesus performed this, the second sign, after coming from Judea to Galilee. Shalom, shalom, peace to you. This is halagos, the word, praise be to God.